critters were pack rats. Pack rats, little bitty, pack little rats. bitty, little bitty turds, and um, actually good and, sight. And, and, and a lot of urine, a lot, a lot of, of urine, and uh, this was on top of the specimens that were in the little boxes. So who are you going to call, Jessica and Jeff? Crudbusters. Crudbusters. <laughs> The vertebrate paleontology collection had been neglected for about 23 years. Mm -hmm. The program from the ground up was built by Professor John Lance. And the person who replaced him was Dr. Everett Lindsay. And I got my master's under him, but when he retired, that was when the university did not replace him. So the entire vertebrate paleontology program just simply came to a screaming halt. <laughs> Jeff had moved here from Illinois and was already starting on the incredible undertaking of cleaning and reorganizing the vertebrate paleontology collection, which had been neglected. What Jeff started, then uh, I came on board a year after you were still breathing pack rat poops. <laughs> <laughs> or fossils, curating fossils. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm Lynn Shepharts, and I'm the newly appointed collections manager for this, which is the paleontological collection of the University of Arizona, which is now part of the desert laboratory. We're the repository of, I would say about 20,000 fossils. And these range from some very early materials that are dinosaurs, examples of dinosaur skin, the impressions left. We have a lot of particularly mammoths in our collection. This is the pelvis of a young male mammoth. Most of our collection and the biggest emphasis in terms of research has been on some of the later time periods. And this is sort of the times of the megafauna where you have large elephant-like creatures, the mastodons and the mammoths and you have large camels that were living right here in the Southwest. So this is part of the skull of a camel. There's a rich history of camel forms that um, originated in the Americas. We also have something that some people might shy away from studying, and that is, to put it bluntly, fossil turds or coprolites, and people are quite fascinated with these. We can learn a lot from their contents about what the animal was eating. The sites where there is evidence of paleo-humans hunting giant animals like mammoths, many of those sites are from the Southwest. This lab has this great collection of faunal material from the Pleistocene, which is really useful if you're studying a site and you want to make identifications and figure out what animals are present at your site. Some of them, you know, look like from extinct animals and I need to make identifications to figure out what animal they're from. So I've spent a lot of time just comparing what I have with what's here. I've identified camel teeth. There's mam a mammoth tooth recovered from the site as well. And there's plenty of mammoth material here to compare it with. I've learned a lot from Jeff and um, Jessica about what it is to manage collections, and I've realized there's a lot more to it than just looking at bones and so forth. This, this isn't a very fancy room, you can tell, but it was so lively when Jeff and I were graduate students. I am... Um, Confident, not just hoping it, confident that we're going to get a new crop of graduate students up here to study all this wonderful material that uh, was left to molder for 20 odd years and now it's having uh, its own renaissance. Mm -hmm.